Hello, and welcome to the Dr. Tim Jennings Show, where you can find real answers to life's problems. I'm your host, Dr. Tim Jennings, here with Susan Collenberg. And welcome. Today, we're going to be discussing the seven levels of moral decision-making. How do we tell the difference between right and wrong? That I have this premise that God's love has been really misunderstood, and it's been misunderstood because of a single idea that has has become orthodox belief across the world, whether people are Christian or non-Christian, it doesn't really matter, but there's an idea that has embedded itself deep in the psyche of humanity that is a corrosive idea, a damaging and destructive idea. And that idea is that, that, when, that God's law mm-hmm. functions no different than the types of laws human beings make up. See, when you hear the word law, that word typically is understood to be a system of rules mm-hmm. that is somehow overseen by a judicial authority, and punishments are usually inflicted for breaking those rules. Like going through a red light. Red light, yes. traffic law, tax laws. This is how much imposed rules. That's how most people think of law. But when I say law of gravity, laws of physics, laws of health, suddenly we realize, wait, that word law has a completely different meaning, and it has nothing to do with imposed rules. It has to do with the protocols upon which reality are built. In truth, God is the creator, the builder of space, time, energy, matter, life itself. His laws are the protocols upon which all reality exists. That's how his laws function. They're the constants. However, there's an idea that has been deeply embedded into the psyche of Christians, but the whole world as well, even those who reject Christianity. If you start talking to them about their idea of what the Christian God looks like, they will absolutely tell you it's this imperialistic dictator who makes up a system of rules, police is breaching his rules, and sin are breaking his laws, and those laws require him to keep track in some record book, right. and then he will one day punish those uh, mm-hmm. for his record for, for his uh, law breaking. But Jesus came in order to take the punishment, and God punished him in your stead. And this whole legal mechanistic thing, in my view, is an infection to Christianity. It's not the true Christian gospel. It's not what the Bible actually teaches, but it came about after Constantine converted, and this idea of imperial law became the way the Christian church began to teach God's law. Prior to that, the New Testament church did not function this way. They functioned on the principles of love and beneficence. They would not go to war against Rome. They died as martyrs. They lived communally. But after this imperial law came in, after Constantine, then the Christian church suddenly goes to war at the Crusades, has the Inquisitions, willing to use coercive force. It was willing to dominate and threaten kings with excommunication and control others with coercive measures mm-hmm. because now this corruption has happened, and, and this is really the big problem both within and outside the church. And and that's what the, the, the book, The God-Shaped Heart, really exposes, that you really can't have healthy living until you come back to live in harmony with how life is constructed or designed to work. And so you need to understand those principles and then make decisions based on those principles. So we have those seven levels. So let's talk about the seven that? levels. Yeah. Yes. The seven levels of moral decision making, you'll find they'll break down into two groups. One group, and we'll come to that, is the group that sees it through the imposed law model, and the other group sees it through design law. Okay. But the seven levels, let's go through those. The most basic primitive level of telling whether something's right or wrong, that's moral decision making. How do I know it's right or wrong? That's a moral decision. The most primitive level is reward and punishment. It's right if you get a reward for it. It's wrong if you get punished for it. Okay. This is the level of of the Nazi soldiers who put people in the gas chamber. Why'd you do it? Well, I'd get punished. I'd get court-martialed if I didn't do it. So it was right to avoid punishment. Um, this is the level of, of a slave mentality. Avoid the whip. Okay. And in Bible, if you want a Bible example, this was ancient Israel as slaves. They were functioning at the level of slaves when they were slaves in Egypt. Level two is the... Um, the marketplace exchange. This is the quid pro quo. Right and wrong is determined by an agreed deal. I'll do something for me in return of something we've agreed in, uh, to, to get back. This is um, the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth mentality. Okay. Um, and under under this level, um, a ruling authority uh, is required to put equal amounts of punishment on, on wrongdoers. And if you don't do it, that's considered immoral. This would be ancient Israel at the time of Sinai. Okay. okay. Uh, everything God has said, we will do. Right. <clears throat> Level three is um, social conformity. Right and wrong is determined by a consensus of the peer group. This is the adolescent. Hey, mom, all, everyone else is doing it. Everyone else is doing it. It must be right. This is ancient Israel when they wanted their kings. All the other nations have kings. We want them too. Right. Level four is law and order. It's a codified system of rules that is overseen and adjudicated by a system of judges or other type of authority figures. And this was ancient Israel at the time of Christ saying to Jesus, we have a law, you're breaking our law, and there by healing on Sabbath and by talking to, to uh, non-Jews and women and so forth, and therefore you should be stoned. 
Wow. Okay. Level five, moral decision making, how you tell whether something's right or wrong, is love for other people. Right and wrong is determined by what's actually beneficent, good, healthy for other people, regardless of the law. Thus, people who are operating at level five at times in America when Jim Crow laws were in operation would have treated African Americans with equality and dignity and respect, in even though the Jim Crow laws said you don't. Okay. Okay, because mm -hmm. love for other people supersedes that. Okay. Level six is principle-based living. Uh, this is actually understanding design laws and how the laws of upon which the universe operate uh, work and choosing to live in harmony with those laws. And level seven is an understanding friend of God. Not only loving other people, not only understanding God's design laws and living intelligently in harmony with them, but um, understanding and cooperating in fulfilling God's purposes. Okay. Those are the seven levels. Okay. So how does this uh, work in relation to people? Can you give us some examples? Yes. Yeah, so let's do a simple one. Let's, let's do tooth brushing. Okay. So right or wrong, brushing your teeth. Uh, level one, small children, it's uh, right to brush your teeth because mommy will praise you and it's wrong because you'll get punished. And very quickly, I saw this with my grandchildren, they move from level one to level two. Um, mommy, if I brush my teeth, will you read me a bedtime story? Uh, no be no uh, brushing teeth, no bedtime story. We've got a deal. Level two, let's okay. make a deal. Okay. Right. Level three, uh, you brush your teeth. It's right to brush your teeth so you'll be accepted at school. It's wrong because you'll be rejected at school. People make fun of you. So to fit with the peer group. Level four, you have a codified system of expectations for the child to meet in the home. And if uh, they don't brush their teeth, they lose a cell phone for a day. So they brush their teeth. Okay. Level five, the, uh, come to love the parents and realize that they don't want to be a burden to their parents. And so they brush their teeth not to cause their parents expense and be a burden to their parents. Okay. Level six, they understand the second law of thermodynamics, even if they can't say it, that if you don't put energy into a system, the system will decay. And so they brush their teeth because they want to keep their teeth actually healthy. And level seven is um, understanding friend of God. You understand that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If you don't brush your teeth, you're going to get in, uh, cavities that can lead to infections. It can undermine your health. And therefore, to keep yourself in the best condition for the greatest usefulness to carry out God's purpose, you brush your teeth to stay healthy. Okay. Now, you notice at all seven levels, people are brushing their teeth. Right. But only level five and above can be mm -hmm. trusted. Mm -hmm. Level one through four operators still require some external threat, some oversight, some inflicted consequence in order to do so. If that's removed, then they stop doing it. And this is the, the seeing life through the imposed consequence. Mm -hmm. I'll get a punishment. I'll lose my deal. I'll be made fun of. I'll, get a cons uh, I'll have a legal problem. Okay, level one through four. This is imposed law construct thinking. And if that's the only reason that a child has to brush their teeth, well, I grew up in a home, and the only reason I have to brush my teeth is because uh, my mom has a rule. But now I've moved out of my house. I don't have the rule anymore. I guess I don't need to brush my teeth anymore. This is what happens in much of religion. They're given this instruction to do things because they'll be punished. Because uh, uh, God's going to get you. Because you won't get the blessing from God if you don't do it. Right. Uh, because you won't be accepted by your church if you don't do it. Because you're in legal trouble with God if you don't do it. And so they, they grow up, and that's the only reasons they have for things. And then they go, that's ridiculous. And they throw it off and they stop doing it. But when we teach people the protocols on how reality works, we teach kids that, hey, you know something? Yeah, there was a time I had to tell you if you didn't brush your teeth. But the reason I had to tell you that was because... If you don't brush them, there's there's the law of thermodynamics. If you don't put energy in, they're going to decay. And you've come to realize, wow, well, that makes perfect sense. I want to do that. And you internalize that make it part of yourself. Well, now you're writing the law on your heart. It's becoming part of who you are. You don't have to have oversight and supervision. You're a self-governed, mature person. This is the, the growing up. Sadly, many people in religions stay stuck mm -hmm. at level four and below. Right. And they're immature. And those types of persons are willing to persecute other people. Okay. Because they have rules and they want those rules enforced. Okay. Even if it's not about them, but if it's about somebody else, they'll use that same fear. It seems like there's so much fear in the levels one through four. That's exactly. They are fear motivated. It's all self-motivated. Right. It's I'm going to get in trouble. I'm not going to get my deal. I'm going to get rejected. I'm going to get in legal trouble. Okay. Right. And so security at those lower levels are found in rule keeping. I'm on base. You can't tag me out, God. Right. Right. Okay. I've paid my tithe. I've gone to church. I've kept the rule. I've been baptized in the right way. I've done the communion. I've said my Hail Marys. I've done what the rules I say I do. Church. God, you can't, you can't, you can't tag me out now. 
Right. It's all uh, securities in rule keeping or in vicarious rule keeping. I can't keep the rules perfect, but that, don't worry. Jesus came and he kept all the rules perfect and I will claim the perfect rule keeping of Jesus and it will put my record in heaven and therefore God can't tag me out because Jesus kept the rules for me. Right. So I have a question about the levels. Can you be at different levels depending upon different situations in your life? You know, can you vacillate from, from, um, uh, being mature in one area, but yet having fear about other things in another area? Is that part of maturing and growing up? So it, there can be transitions, and uh, usually you're oscillating between two levels because you're in the okay. grow pattern between two levels. People don't really oscillate too often unless it's something hugely traumatizing and it's a brief regression, but they don't get stuck there, out of a mature level down to a level one type of thing. Okay. Yeah. Because that, okay, so you're, you, you're kind of, uh, it's all about maturation then, I guess. Growing up. Growing maturing, up. Yeah. Growing up.